If you're a struggling worker, the chances of moving up in social class is on the decline. If you're born into poverty, you're more likely to stay in poverty. Robert Putnam has spent decades studying social mobility in Port Clinton, Ohio. It's a small town outside of Cleveland, and it's where he grew up. He's a Harvard professor whose latest book is great, and it's called Our Kids, The American Dream in Crisis. He joins us from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Nice to see you, sir. Thanks for talking with us. Talk to me about Port Clinton, Ohio. You've described it as a bellwether town in a bellwether state. What's What has happened over the years in Port Clinton? Well, when I grew up in Port Clinton in the 1950s, so did that, it was a kind of a little Lake Wobegon on Lake Erie. That is, nobody very rich in town, nobody very poor in town. Um, the dads of my uh, classmates mostly worked in small factories or small worked on small farms or were fishermen on Lake Erie. The moms were all stay-at-home moms. Now we know how we've all done the class of 1959, because we're all, you know, in our 70s. And the fact is, we've all done pretty well. Actually, most of us have done much better than our parents did. And even more strikingly, the kids from the wrong side of the tracks have done just about as well as the kids from the right side of the tracks. Let me ask you a question there. Have we now sort of really killed the American dream, which to me has always been, if you want it badly enough, you, regardless of your station when you're born, you can move out of that place by dint of hard work. Education has become much more the golden road to success in America. And if you don't have a good education, you're you're in a harder place in terms of finding a job. That's that growing inequality at the level of adults is an important part of the, the background story here. The working class families, white and black across America, have, have become very fragile and fractured and, and in disarray. But the thing that's new in our lifetime, in my lifetime at least, is that this gap, as, as you say, it, is, is extended between the upper third, the college-educated Americans, that's basically the upper third of American society, and the lower third, what we used to call the working class, that's basically people who got maybe have a high school degree but didn't get past high school, that gap is really wide. The challenges facing these poor kids, the, the lower third of American society, are much greater than the challenges that faced kids like that a generation or two ago. You had said you had hoped that the conversation in this election cycle would be focused on that inequality of opportunity for those poor kids. And we're really looking at the disaffected white working class, uh, often man, who is the, the Trump voter. Does that focus actually eventually trickle down to the, the, the kids who are lacking opportunity, do you think? Or is that just a different conversation altogether? I'm not trying to be sympathetic to Trump himself, actually. I, I don't have... I don't have positive feelings about him, but I do think that a lot of his supporters um, are expressing real frustrations that are legitimate in their lives. They're looking for scapegoats. Um, it's clearly that something bad has happened, um, and they know they're left behind. Regardless of who is elected, it seems to me that you ignore this population, the disaffected white working class, at your own peril as a politician. Is that true? Yeah. We've been more aware as a country over the last 20 or 30 years of the, of the problems of, the, uh, of poverty in the, in the black community. We've been less aware of the fact that there's been also growing poverty in the white working class. I, don't, I want to be careful that we don't do kind of comparative, uh, who's worse off, the poor bl whites or the poor blacks? Probably, if that's the direct comparison, the poor blacks are even worse off. But compared to the country as a whole, both of them are worse off, and that's what I, I think we've got to avoid having this become a yet another area in which we become divided in racial terms. So I'm not pessimistic about this problem as a, as a matter of policy. I know there are policies that we could follow, early childhood education and community colleges and a lot of things we could do to begin to narrow this gap. The real issue is, do we want to fix it? Robert Putnam is a professor at Harvard University, and his book is called Our Kids, the American Dream in Crisis. Dr. Putnam, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks very much, Olivia.